final Sunday of our Lenten journey this year. Greetings, my friends, grace and peace and Hosanna in the highest. It is Palm Sunday and we're entering Holy Week and the big city with Jesus this morning. We're so glad that you would tune into God with us. We pray that you will experience the movement of the Spirit in our time together. Let us worship the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. Let Israel say his love endures forever. And all who fear God say his love endures forever. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord is our strength and our might. The Lord has become our salvation. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. Oh, glory, Lord, and honor to the 
everybody. Happy Palm Sunday. I have just taken my last item out of my Lenten bag. It is now Palm Sunday and it's empty. I have all the things, my candle, my human, everything out here on my worship space. And I have a couple of green crayons that I'm going to use a dark green and a light green to color my palm and I have some scissors so when I'm done I can go around all of these little sharp edges and cut it out so I have a palm to wave today. Well, I was thinking about this today. Why am I waving a palm anyway? What does that have to do with Jesus? Well, the Bible reminds us of a really important day in Jesus' life sometimes called the triumphal entry, sometimes called Palm Sunday, but still an important day where people recognized the love that Jesus brought to the world and how important Jesus was. Let's hear about it. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in a town. You're coming? And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Eh, okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. Rock! He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Huh? The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset and they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. So the people kept on singing, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, Who is this? And the crowds replied, It's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry just as God said he would many years before. So now we know we wave our palms and say, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Mm -hmm. Here is Jesus who comes in the name of the Lord, who comes sharing God's love and teaching us the way. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Happy Palm Sunday. Week in and week out, whether we are together in the sanctuary or gathered online. On Tuesday mornings, a faithful group of prayer warriors dial into a phone call and read through 
not only a morning reflection, but the prayer list that we compile day by day by day and hour by hour by hour. If you are in need of prayer, I hope that you will let us know that. Email us from near and far away so that we can include you in the list that is prayed over always. And when we're not named on lists for prayer, we lift up the body of Christ, all God's people in the church and perhaps more so on the outside, those we have yet to welcome and include, those we have, dare I say, convinced that the love of God is here, that God is the love, and that Jesus simply, and maybe not so simply, wanted us to be one together in churches, hearing the music, humming the songs. And so will you, this morning, or this afternoon, or on this night, join me in a word of prayer. Gracious and most holy God, giver of our whole lives and stories, giver of the story throughout history of religious people trying to get it right. And Lord, we know that we have failed and that we will fail and that we are failing to do it perfectly, but as good and faithful Methodist Wesleyan people, we are moving on and into perfection. We want to be better. We want to get it right. And Lord, we know that where one group may be excluded or oppressed, someone has been made free and so we hold the tension of doing the work to include all, that we not forget anyone. And in this country, in this time, we are ever mindful that hate crimes are real and that there is no place for them in a country of people who are free. Lord, we are aware that this country is in desperate need of gun control, that we should be speaking out and lobbying for and talking to each other about the need, the fear. Because while we value the op-ed pieces in the New York Times, we are your people striving to teach one another to be advocates for justice for all. And so, Lord, as we labor through that work, we ask that you would strengthen us, encourage us, empower us to provide resources and resourcing for our community to come to our sanctuary or even our website to understand how we can be a part of change. And so for us faithful people on this spiritual journey, we realize a holiness that is personal and social. We realize that this is about us, but we are not saved without all being saved. And so as we do the work on this Palm Sunday, as we hear the words of Hosanna, we too might cry out, Lord, save us from ourselves, from the evils of this world, from the temptation to doubt or be silent and work for justice day by day by day. And so as we gather, and as we grapple with all that we see, feel helpless about and to change, we dare pray together, singing the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, we 
chart in heaven, hallowed be. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the King and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Here's our announcements for today. This afternoon, our Community and Global Outreach Committee meets uh, on Zoom after worship in person at 1030. And we in invite anyone who's interested in joining in this group's effort to lead our congregation in mission and outreach in our community and our world to come and join the Zoom call and see what they're about. They can always use some extra hands. The work is always wonderful, and we are so grateful for the effort that they put forth. We are also grateful that the leadership of our men's group has decided to continue meeting even after our Lenten season. So the men's fellowship will continue to meet via Zoom right now at 11 on Saturdays, and we are thankful for that great new life in our congregation. We also are still inviting people who are interested in purchasing flowers for our Easter services to do so. You can do so through Wednesday and um, make those in memory or in honor of anyone that you would like to lift up this season. We can do that online and via our website. So please go ahead and do that again by Wednesday. And we are obviously entering Holy Week this week, and we are wonderfully gifted for several times to worship together. On Thursday, Monday, Thursday, we will meet in the sanctuary at 730 or anytime online for the service of remembrance of the Last Supper, foot washing, Monday, Thursday. On set, Good Friday, we will meet at 7.30 as well in the sanctuary in person and online for a service of Tenebrae. And we are grateful again for the opportunity to gather several times on Easter Sunday, in person outdoors at 8.30, weather permitting, and in person indoors in the sanctuary at 10.30, and of course, anytime online. Thank you. We're looking forward to journeying with you through Holy Week, into Easter, into Resurrection Sunday, into new hope and new life for all our lives. I hope that you'll have an opportunity to invite friends and family to join us and join you on this journey this week so that we can be together in remembrance and celebration. It is always good that the people of God would gather together, even by screens on smartphones and televisions and laptops. And it has been a very, very long year in the midst of the pandemic and all the work that we have had to do and adapt and innovate. And so uh, a profound word of thanks 
for those of you who have uh, been with us and faithful to us and contributing so that the work of the church and the people can continue. We're grateful for an amazing stewardship campaign. We're grateful for a year that ended so well and a year that has uh, begun quite well. Thank you for your faithfulness to the work of God through Jesus Christ. As we at Morrow Church seek to bring the kingdom, the reign of God that is one of love, respect, value for all people to the earth. And so we thank you for living into the vows that you make when you join a church or when you're confirmed to uphold us, to uphold the church with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures, that's us, here below. Praise God above all ye heavenly and earthly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. The first reading this morning is from Psalm 118, verses 26 to 29. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. reading today is from Mark chapter 11 verses 1 to 11. 
When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. <laughs> Friends, today I took possession of the goods, the Hametz, from Temple Bethel in South Orange, New Jersey, by the invitation of Rabbi Jesse Olitsky. Hello, everyone. Uh, as we approach Passover, we burn our Hametz and sell our Hametz the day before Passover uh, because Passover starts on a Saturday night. We don't do this on Shabbat itself, and so we do this on Friday, uh, a full 24 hours plus before Passover starts. And the custom is that we sell our hametz to somebody who does not celebrate Passover, because the financial burden of throwing out all of our leaven products makes it not feasible or logical for us. We clean our homes, we rid our homes as much as possible of our 11 products of our chametz, but then um, we sell our chametz, and we're grateful as 
especially virtually this past year, it's been challenging to build community partnerships, which is always our goal. Um, so we're grateful that um, our friend and colleague, Pastor Janice Lynn of Moro Methodist Church, uh, is buying all the flamates from Beth L this year. Uh, she will be taking possession of not just the flamates here in our Beth L building, but taking possession of flamates in 93 addresses. That includes Levin Products in South Orange, Maplewood, Milburn, Short Hills, Springfield, West Orange, Montclair, Princeton, Livingston, Union, Elizabeth, New Providence, Hackensack, Roseland, Bergen County, the Jersey Shore, suburban Philadelphia, and some of our college students, including those in St. Louis, in Delaware, in Ann Arbor, in Seattle, and also some homes in the Berkshires. Additionally, there are several kosher establishments that I get rabbinic supervision to, and so temporarily over Passover, you also own all the 11 products at Live Breads, at two Dunkin' Donuts locations in West Orange, and at Sunny's Bagels. So, load up and enjoy yourself. Um, the cost of all of this for you to take possession is $1. If you're willing to buy it for that uh, grand total. It's a steal. It's a steal. Thank you. We have a halakha process known as kinyan. Um, so I'm going to ask you if you agree to the terms of this contract, which is fully in Hebrew, and I know you're fluent in, and I know every single thing that it says. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to take this pen and pull it towards you. Excellent. And then we'll have... You sign. For one dollar, I am now in possession of the goods in our surrounding communities, the Berkshires, Delaware, South Jersey, and the suburbs of Philly. We will protect and keep those and return them at the close of the Passover. We then gathered for the burning of the leavened products. I share with you now the contract that has been signed to take possession of the goods. Shalom and Amen. We've prepared all season for this week, and now we leave the wilderness country for the big city. And like the year that is behind us, it will be a holy roller coaster ride of raw emotion as we work our way to Easter. From shouts of Hosanna in the highest to the cries of crucify him. From the trembling range of were you there? To the conclusive melody of Alleluia, Christ arose. Some churches will read the entire week's narrative today. They won't come back together for Monday, Thursday or Good Friday. They won't sit through the Last Supper or feel Jesus washing their feet. They won't sit through the dramatic readings and attend to the suffering of our Lord on Good Friday. They move right from this Sunday to the next, to the celebration of Easter. I suppose we could too, because we are ready and eager and anxious to get beyond this pandemic. And maybe at this point, Avoid the pain and the intimacy of Holy Week. Please, sweet Jesus, isn't it Easter yet? But that's not who we are. 
We are a people on a spiritual journey, a deep one, trying to make sense of and meaning in each season, each day, each occasion of our lives, each moment in time, by remembering and reflecting in prayer and meditation and in faithful Christian conferencing. We are a people on a spiritual journey who learn to get comfortable sitting in and through our pain and disagreements to avoid acting out, being reactive and sabotaging ourselves and others, let alone infecting them. You know what I'm talking about, making things so much worse for ourselves and for God's people. Because very quickly, we were in lockdown. It was for us a mule that had never been ridden, virgin territory of the unfamiliar to our generation, where too many loved ones did not survive. We had our world overturned like the tables in the temple, and the fig tree, well, we're waiting for its full bloom. And so we do, we enter humbly and peacefully to attend to Holy Week, to recall and remember, because God is here and there with us, aware of where we have been and aware of our hope for what lies ahead. And maybe this morning, this Palm Sunday morning, we the people on the journey can remember what it's like to be in the midst of a rowdy crowd with energy and excitement in the air. Maybe we can feel and imagine people bumping up against us, into us, remember that? And jockeying for a better position to he see who's coming. The one who's been performing miracles, healing people and raising them from the dead. Maybe we will shout a loud Hosanna, save us from the despair, the violence, the guns, the racism, sexism, and homophobia, the we can't trust anyone ism. Save us, for the rock star is coming. Someone like, I know, yeah, Bruce Springsteen or Bono or Barack Obama, our renegade heroes, save us, please. And then maybe <laughs> we can imagine some disappointment because someone a wee bit more like a Hare Krishna hippie in a van with fuzzy dice is coming down the narrow mountain on a young and wobbly coat. Colt, a young and wobbly colt. No impressive stallion, no chariot, no gold, no purple, no camels, only people behind and before him because Jesus knew no rank or privilege. And that was and is worth celebrating for people on a journey. That is worthy of our worship. This powerful procession into the city is recorded in all four Gospels. That makes it very important. But it is the sequence of events in Mark's earliest of the Gospels, the very first word of good news to be written, that is so interesting. In Mark, Jesus enters the city for the days-long festival, looks around the temple, and leaves. Whether he was outraged at what he found, needed rest, or to pray, or to pee, we do not know because Mark doesn't tell us. The one who reports that most things happen immediately reports that Jesus left to come back the next day, curse the fig tree, and overthrow the marketplace. Each act worthy of our sitting through and pondering. Take a moment with the chapters in and around our scripture this morning. 
Because then, as Mark records it, Jesus leaves again. Now, he might have been busy referring back to the prophet Zechariah, who said the king would come humbly and riding on a donkey, that there would no longer be traitors in the house of the Lord, who spoke of God's covenant, setting the prisoners free, and drinking their blood like wine. All that is rather familiar to us for this week. And then Jesus comes back again, and so will we. But maybe not without pain and practice. When I went before the Board of Ordained Ministry in 2009, I had been serving the local church as a lead pastor for eight years. I was affirmed in the first round of interviews two years before that as a rock star myself. So I was terrified but confident. But I made some really dumb mistakes in my written work, and I didn't ask for a partner to help me in the process. And I choked. And in the midst of the debrief that could have saved me, I left. I walked out. I was mad and hurt and embarrassed. And it was the Reverend Bobby Rombach who was serving this church at the time and on the Board of Ordained Ministry. She came back tomorrow or she called Pastor Brenda on the phone and said, call Janice. Make sure she's okay. The next day, the phone call came that my ordination would not be happening. And after about three days of personal humiliation and outrage, and a year of revisiting the work and the trauma of that experience, I came back the next year to be ordained with Pastor Brenda. We enter humbly with Jesus. We are a people on a spiritual journey who embrace the pain and uncertainties without fear. We are a people who learn to sit through the suffering, the despair, and the disappointments with trust and faith and courage. Maybe we're a people who retreat to attend to our scriptures. This year of pandemic has taught us to slow down, like it or not to innovate and to adapt, to value and to appreciate each other, to be more attentive to the good and the bad news in need of fixing, and to be more creative and aware and awake and humble enough to cry to Jesus, save us, please. And as we think about how the story plays out in Mark's gospel, I'm wondering how it plays out for you. So, people of the journey, keep coming back to your smartphones and laptops and TVs. Keep coming back to the sanctuary as you are able. Keep coming back on Thursday and Friday and give this our story its due. Sit through so that we can celebrate the overcoming on Sunday, especially this year. Like the year that is behind us, it will be a roller coaster of emotions. From shouts of a Hosanna in the highest to cries of crucify him, from the trembling range of were you there, to the conclusive melody of Alleluia, Christ arose. Keep coming back. Amen.
Go now in peace. Will you go out into the world and realize that we are on a journey? We are on a journey together to do the work, to sit through and yet not remain silent. Will you go out into the world and use the gifts that God has given you uniquely? Go out into the world and know that God is the love in our midst and within us that Jesus came into the world, entered Jerusalem, and rose, that we might rise. Go in the name of the one who is creator and redeemer, and the one who will sustain us for all time. Amen. Thanks for being with us another uh, Sunday, another week. We are grateful for your presence, and we hope that you will reach out to us and let us know that you've been blessed or how you've been blessed so that we can bear witness to the work that we are doing.